What if I told you that showering is actually unhealthy? And not only am I living proof, as you might already know, I actually don't shower, and I purposefully don't shower, and I haven't showered for about four years. Now, it might sound absolutely ludicrous, ridiculous, and in fact, you might even quite literally say, you're completely full of shit. However, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that there's actually pretty decent reasoning as to why exactly I don't shower. And in fact, in this video, I'm going to be giving you the scientific reasoning more so. And it's a little bit interesting, and it actually would explain quite a bit, especially when it comes to people who before were showering over and over and over again, and they had eczema, they had acne, they had all these problems, and then they stop showering, and then all of that stuff just starts to go away. And it's very, very interesting. And why might some of the cases for this be? And in fact, why are people actually experiencing some benefits by removing the process of just constantly showering? Well, this has to do with some of the science behind what happens when you expose your skin to the basically water and detergents constantly on a repeated basis over and over and over again. And actually, yes, by the way, this probably does age your skin as well. And this has to do with the fact that you're basically constantly forcing your skin to uh, basically produce more energy, or I, I guess you could say in this case, uh, go through oxidation more and basically produce a lot more uh things that you need and in the process of doing so it actually does damage the skin I think and this also has to do is this is sort of a similar concept to working out in this case which is a completely different video so if you're interested in why exercise actually might actually be unhealthy which I do think it sort of is in some sense then you can go check out that video. So let's get into the science and understanding what exactly is going on and why it's actually damaging. Now, this is a little bit complicated because we have to actually understand the underlying basics of how the skin sort of functions. But afterwards, you will be able to understand and quite literally see, or at the very least, hopefully, you can um, apply a little bit of the previous biochemistry knowledge that I talk about in all of my previous videos to what exactly is going on here. So let's start off with the first thing, corneocytes and the lipid matrix. Now, corneocytes are basically just the top layer of your skin. Um, so it's basically the dead skin cells on the outside. And you might say, well, what's the big deal with these dead skin cells? Uh, aren't they supposed to be bad, right? You're supposed to be cleaning off those dead skin cells. Well, they are held together by a lipid matrix in this case. And the lipid matrix, I think, is actually very, very important. And it's part of the reason which you might be able to come to the conclusion yourself a bit later as to what happens when you stop showering. Suddenly, if you notice, your skin gets very, very oily. And why might that be the case? Well, it could quite literally be because the lipid matrix, uh, there's a little bit too many lipids in this case. Yes, exactly. Um, and this is because you're basically constantly exposing the surface or the outside of your skin to this environmental stimulus. And in turn, it has to react and it has to basically produce these lipids in order for it to hold those corneocytes together. But let's go a little more into detail. Next are desmosomes. Now desmosomes, basically to keep it really short, uh, hold the corneocytes together in a sense, because once again, when you're exposing yourself to water and detergents, which I will explain to get, uh, later on why that is unbelievably damaging to the skin layer, uh, we'll go into a little bit of understanding why, then you'll be able to see, oh, wait a second, showering actually is very bad, possibly. Uh, very, very bad, actually. Next, we come to the most important thing for that matter is the keratinocytes. Now, this is actually the thing that's basically holding and producing all of those lipids. Now, you might say, oh my God, when I stop showering, my skin gets super oily. Yes, that's right. And that's because your keratinocytes in this case that are producing these lipids to help keep that lipid matrix uh, still basically functioning together along with the corneocytes together uh, and the desmosomes basically. All of that is being bunched together to make your skin. And in this case, when you constantly, once again, are exposing your skin to water and detergents over and over and over again, lo and behold, you are forcing your keratinocytes to really ramp up the lipid production because you're basically washing that away, which we'll get into more of the detail later on. And this is very interesting because this is actually the explanation as to why you suddenly stop showering and, oh my God, why am is my skin getting so oily? Exactly, this is the reason. 
Now, the final factor that we need to understand, basically when it comes to understanding the damage to the skin barrier function is a hydrolipid film or basically the acid mantle. Now, this is basically just sweat, sebum and a couple of other moisturizing factors that your body produces. And it's basically what uh, helps those desmosomes uh, stay together as well. And it works together with the lipid matrix. And lo and behold, problems start to occur when you start to basically remove all of this stuff. And yes, the acid mantle in this case can actually be damaged by frequent washing. Hmm. And what exactly does frequent washing mean? Well, I'll let you assume what that means. And this is where we come to how exactly is water damaging your skin? There's no way showering could be bad, right? Well, after you understand a little bit of how the skin functions, let's see how water or some of the mechanisms of water for that matter could possibly damage your skin. Well, uh, don't worry, there's, there's gonna be a lot of uh, reasoning behind this one. And afterwards, you yourself might stop showering because you might realize this actually could be the thing that's making people's skin age much quicker than it should be. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is going on? Now we already know that water exposure can cause basically cells or in this case skin cells to explode or rupture and you might say what on earth how is this possible well this is because of osmotic pressure and stuff and if you're really interested in how water works and uh, a little bit more stuff about water then go check out the real nutrition science playlist and go check out the water video because it explains it exactly there now, how exactly could water be damaging the skin barrier function? Well, after understanding how all of basically the skin barrier works, now let's talk about how water will interact with the skin barrier. And you should hopefully be able to draw some of these conclusions yourself because you would realize, oh wait, that makes a lot of sense. So the first one has to do with basically osmotic pressure and constantly exposing your skin cells to water. Now, your skin cells are basically already uh, designed to not explode and the osmotic pressure is basically designed for that specific environment. However, in this case, when you're constantly showering over and over and over again, you are basically increasing the size of those cells. And in this case, the increasing the size of the cells, in, the, in this case, the corneocytes, will cause them to rupture and burst. And this is not what you want to be doing. And this is basically because you can flood your cells with water in this case, which is not what you want to do. Or you could, uh, for that matter, just put salt on the outside of your skin, which I wouldn't really recommend that either if you want to do the opposite effect. But regardless, that's how you can get the opposite effect when it comes to quite literally making your cells instead of uh, blowing up, you could just make them shrivel, shrink, and then sort of like clump together like this. Now, if you understand a little bit about chemistry, then you would know that cold water would do this much less. However, hot water will do this much more. And this has to do with basically uh, reactions occurring and uh, chemical reactions occurring in this case. So if you expose your skin to hot water over and over and over again, yes, exactly. This is going to end up happening at an even faster rate than if it's cold water. Now, if it's cold water and if you're doing like cold water stuff, then this rate, uh, basically this damage to your skin won't be happening as quickly. But it still will be happening because once again, you are uh, swelling the corneocytes and you're basically making them pop. Not only this, basically that chronic exposure to hot water, if you're using those hot water showers, could lead to the emulsification. And in this case, uh, that's very, very bad because the emulsification in this case basically means it's also stripping the lipid layer as well as popping the corneocytes, which is a double two in one kill. So I really wouldn't recommend that one because that that's really bad. Now, this is the final part where we come to soaps and detergents actually being incredibly damaging. Now, if you already understand a little bit about the water stuff, uh, water is definitely not necessarily ideal, but soaps and shampoos are on like a astronomically worse level. And by astronomically worse, I mean way, way worse. Because if you understand how detergents work, this stuff is really bad. So why exactly are detergents so bad? More specifically, why are soaps and shampoos so bad? Well, this is because what detergents will do is when it comes to the lipid bilayer, just as an example, is they will basically replace uh, the proteins, or in this case, um, or they will just basically add their self to the lipid bilayer. And this is not a good thing because this will cause the rupturing of the lipid bilayer possibly. Um, it's really not ideal. Yes, uh, so what exactly do you use in order to clean your hands from those bacteria and stuff if you ever want to clean your hands and make sure there's no bacteria on it? That's right, you use soap. Um, yeah, so you're basically sort of making them explode in some sort of sense and you're basically messing with the uh, cell membrane of those bacteria. Yeah, you're kind of doing the exact same thing, except you're doing that with your skin cells. Not necessarily ideal. 
Now, yes, it does interact with the skin barrier. And not only does it interact with the skin barrier, more specifically in the lipid bilayer of your cells, it also interacts with the lipid matrix because yeah, that's how detergents work. So it's already a two and one double kill, not ideal and not something that you want to be doing not something I would recommend either. Now, if you thought that it just ends with corneocytes and basically the skin layer, as well as the lipid matrix and how water and shampoo can damage it, well, you are mistaken because it goes even one step further. There is actually one other thing that is on your skin that's very important, and that is your microbiome. Yeah, it turns out that there's actually helpful bacteria on your skin. Who would have thought? <laughs> Just like your gut has a microbiome, your skin does as well. And in this case, constantly exposing your skin to water and shampoo will disrupt this microbiome. So why exactly would we want to be doing this? We already know that it damages the corneocytes. We already know that it damages desmosomes as well as forcing uh, keratinocytes to produce way, way more lipids. And not only that, we also know that basically the lipid matrix is also being damaged. So why on earth would we want to damage it more and more and more you know that's that's a very good question now how do you think your body reacts to this well actually your body does exactly what it needs to do it actually ramps up lipid production because it looks at it and goes i need to start producing way way more lipids because that lipid matrix is being constantly damaged over and over and over again and that's exactly what your body does your body starts cranking out the basically lipids uh in order to keep your cells together, quite literally keep your skin together so you don't look like mush. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it does. And lo and behold, that's not necessarily the best thing. So why exactly would we want to increase the oil production of our skin and make our skin even more oily? Once again, not ideal. So if you ever want something to compare this to, basically showering more specifically, and how exactly showering can be compared to dysfunction of the gut microbiome, you could sort of look at it like this. When you take antibiotics, your stomach basically and your gut bacteria in your stomach end up getting killed because the antibiotics kill both the good and the bad bacteria. However, showering is almost no different in this case because you are doing exactly that when you constantly expose your skin to water. You are basically getting rid of those bacteria as well as basically in inflicting tons and tons of damage to the bacteria, quite literally by making them explode in one way or another, or maybe even disrupting the cell membrane of that bacteria, because once again, you're introducing detergents. So why exactly would you use soap shampoo? Exactly. Not only that, why would you use water? Exactly. That's right. Well, that's one more reason. Actually, I guess that's three more reasons for that matter why you don't want to be showering. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful or informative. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below because it really does help the channel grow. And if you're interested in giving yourself extra stem cells, go click my Cerule link where you can go get Cerule from me. And if you don't know why this stuff is so amazing, go check out my Min Maxing Health playlist and you will understand just exactly why this stuff is so unbelievably amazing. Or even go check out the Cerule playlist. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Pew.